Howdy YouTube, Unky Joe here, Unky Joe's Playhouse. Today I'm back. I'm back. We're doing some stuff. We're doing some stuff. The stuff we're doing today is, uh, well, look, look behind me. The great reveal. What is that? That's a new server. Remember? I said I ordered it. It came in from my good friends at uh, Garland Computer up in Irving, Texas. Got this off of eBay. It is a, or an, IBM. X3650 M3 IBM server <clears throat> and I blame Morton at my playhouse it's all his fault that I bought this server he has been ranting and raving about IBM slash Lenovo servers for the past three years and uh, you know at some point you just gotta you gotta take a step over to the dark side now Morton calls the Dells the dark side I call the IBM's the dark side not because they're bad it's just because you fear what you don't know, you know? It's called fear of the unknown. But now that I know it, I have to tell you, he was right. They're damn good servers. Uh, I'm very, very pleased with the speed and the elegant design of this server. Uh, is it as good as my Dell? Of course it is. Uh, I just prefer the Dell. I just have a, I just have a brand preference. But the IBM is gonna have a nice little home in my, uh, in my rack and it's gonna have a bright and beautiful future. So let's uh, get into the meat and potatoes of this server so you can see what it came with and what I've done to it since then. And then we'll come back at the end of the video and we'll discuss it a little bit in, uh, in a little more detail. And the great reveal. What have we here, boys and girls, ladies and gentlemen, friends and neighbors? What we have is an IBM 3650 Model 3. 7945 AC1 with two and a half inch drive bays. We can have up to 16 drives in here if we wanted to with an expander. This is the one I ordered off of eBay and I blame all of this on Morton. It's all his fault. And as you can see, it's the IBM 3650 M3. Uh, I ordered this off <coughs> eBay from the same folks that I got my Dell servers from. Uh, that was Garland Computer Systems, and uh, if you ever get a chance, they're out of Irving, Texas, which is right outside of Dallas, so I'm going to give them a little shout out here. Uh, uh, I got the server for under 200 bucks. It has two uh, quad-core uh, Xeon processors inside, 2.4 gigahertz, I believe. It came with 16 gig of RAM. And uh, let's see, it comes with the CD-ROM drive. It came with two 146 gigabyte spinning 10K SAS drives, which are uh, rated at six gigabits per second. Uh, it has the, oh, it has the little uh, Shingen Madero here, the Light Path Diagnostics uh, from IBM comes with it. This unit also has a CD-ROM drive right here, uh, CD-ROM, DVD-ROM drive. Uh, you have your video out here, you have two USB ports, and of course you have your little mounting ears for the, uh, <coughs> for going on a rack. Right now I have it on my little wheel rack because I'm doing some work on it. Here's the top of the unit. Now, and then here's the back of the unit. This is the management port, so I have a, a, uh, network cable plugged in there this is ethernet or gigabit ethernet three one and two i don't have the i don't have the additional ports in here as you can see they're blank <clears throat> i have ordered a daughter card because i do want a total of four gigabit network cards on this but it does come with two gigabit nick uh cards <clears throat> on this one so i have a little trouble with my scratchy throat today and then i've got a vga monitor plugged into the back here there's a couple of USB ports, and then I have dual power supplies, and you can see I've got one of these power supplies pulled out right now. Uh, I'm having an odd, I was having an odd problem with this, and I have contacted Garland about this. What happens is, once you power the unit off, the unit should be quiet. I'm going to go ahead and pop this power supply back in, so you can hear what I'm talking about. So if I were to plug this power cord into this power supply, Nice and quiet, right? No noise at all. 
AC DC light comes on, no faults. If I unplug this one and plug the other one in, can you hear it? Immediately the fan comes on. And you can hear the, let me hold the microphone up and you can hear what I'm talking about. That's quite a bit. Well, this server's loud definitely it's coming out anyway. So I contact the, the uh, folks at Garland and uh, tell them what's going on. And they're going to send me another power supply uh, here next week. And they just told me to uh, retire this power supply. When, uh, you know, just in other words, get rid of it. Uh, or keep it as a spare, but for now what I'm doing is I'm just I'm popping it out and I'm running the unit on one power supply only and so when I plug that in It kicks in get green lights Get green lights on the back and on the front All is well now I went ahead and installed my Mellanox 10 gigabit card out of my out of the uh, Dell that I ended up leasing to my clients so I've got the Mellanox 10 gig card installed in there as well. All right, all right. So well, it's the machine is uh, plugged in right now. I'm going to go ahead and pull the power plug on it. I don't like opening the covers on this without with the uh, power plugged in. Go ahead and lift it here. You have to lift it and push it back with a little bit of force. And then the cover comes off and you get into all the goodness on the inside. All right, I have the camera up on a tripod, but I want to show you some of the stuff inside here. So let me, uh, let me get it adjusted. And let me do a little zoom in here. So right here we have, this is the... Uh, uh, M5001 uh, 8 port yeah 8 is it 8 or 6 yeah it's an 8 port uh, SAS serial ATA uh, RAID controller uh, made by LSI uh, and that works just fine and then underneath that right here this little thing Chingamadera here that is the battery to run that then it, you can see the back plane here for the drives and then I can buy another back plane and cables and put it in here if I got if I got the correct uh, connector I don't know if you can see it here or not this is a USB plug so if you're running ESXi off a USB stick or whatever you have it in there uh, these are the hot swappable fans there's three of them now uh, we'll go ahead and remove this one. Oh, in order to remove these little plastic housings I didn't know this at the start you have to remove this riser assembly over here which is out of view right now let me uh, show you what I'm talking about so you have to remove this riser assembly to get this black plastic part out so I just you lift up on it and it comes right out like that put that over there and then one of the CPUs is here the other CPU is here so now you can get this little black airflow director out of there as I call it and then you have access to your seat one of your CPUs now in order to get access to the RAM you have to pull this unit out as well and then you have access to your RAM sticks okay and your other processor now <clears throat> this unit came with 16 gig of RAM but uh, Sasha Lopez from the United Kingdom was kind enough to send me some some RAM thought I could get some use out of it. He sent me four 8 gig sticks. So what I've done is I put those four sticks he gave me in here uh, to run 32 gig of memory. Now I tried using the existing 16 gig of memory that was in there. There were four 4 gig sticks of RAM and I just couldn't, uh, in my narrow or thick head, could not get the RAM to work. Uh, by follow the, following the directions on, uh, and here's those RAM sticks right here. They're the Hynix 2800R RAM right here. Uh, but for the life of me, I could not get the memory to work uh, together. But I'm going to give it another try here in a minute. So 
I'm going to go ahead while I've got this unit open and, and change out that RAM or add that RAM and see if I can get some more memory in there. And then this riser right here I took out and put that Mellanox um, 10 gig uh, SFP card in there. So uh, the other thing that came in yesterday, this unit did not come with remote access, a remote access key. For these IBMs you need an actual physical dongle to make that happen. Just like on the Dell you need the... Uh, the iDRAC Enterprise card in order to make that work. Uh, so that came in the mail yesterday, a little blue dongle right here. And you just pop it in there and then you have uh, you have the ability to use remote access on the machine. So I'm going to fiddle with the RAM and uh, I'll come back when we're done with that. So sure enough, that's, that's what it was. I just had a little trouble wrapping my mind around the RAM. So there's three, let me see if I can explain this. There's three channels per microprocessor. And I wasn't using all three. As you notice, I only had two DIMMs in here initially to start with, an 8 and an 8. So that would have meant 16 gig to this processor, and an 8 and an 8 would have meant 16 gig to this processor, and then they could share it between them. So if I'd had three 8 gigs in here, that would have meant 24 to one processor and 24 to another. The problem I was having was instead of putting this NIC next to, or this uh, DIMM, I don't know why I keep calling it a NIC, but instead of installing this DIMM next to this DIMM, I was putting it in the third channel. And I had to have all three in the channel being the same. So when you're mixing the, the RAM like this is an 8 and a 4, you have to have them together in an independent channel. So once I did that and moved them here, now my RAM has jumped from 32 gig to uh, 49 gig. So, because uh, 32 and uh, 16, yeah, is 49. No, 48 gig of RAM. Uh, close enough. So that's what I need to do. Just a little helpful hint on these IBMs. Now, the Dells are probably the same way. I'm going to be doing a memory upgrade on my production Dell in a separate video. But I know it uses banking and interleaving, and it's kind of complicated. And frankly, I'm going to be honest with you, I don't know how to explain it. But once I went on IBM's website, and I'll show you a, uh, a shot of that uh, here on this video, the memory configuration. Once I went there, I, I was able to wrap my head around it. So, all right, so the next thing I need to do is remove one of the drives, uh, one of the uh, SA, uh, SAS drives from the front of this unit and replace it. I don't want a spinning drive. I want a, uh, I want to put an SSD in there. So what I'm going to do is the operating system is loaded on the first uh, SAS drive and this is what they look like. They're little two and a half inch drives. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put an SSD in this caddy pop that into the unit and have that be the data drive just until I get I've got more of these data caddies on order and then I've got some uh, 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 we're taking we're taking donations for the SSD fund if anybody wants to uh, send a donation and to buy a couple of uh, SSDs for this uh, unit that'd be great uh, if not we'll we'll get there eventually uh, but this is 146 gig 10k 6 gig uh, per second uh, SAS drive and I'm going to replace it with a uh, SSD temporarily just so we can get some uh, virtual machines transferred over to here. So speaking of memory let me go over here to uh, Chrome and show you what I'm talking about. This is on the uh, Lenovo website. Uh, this is uh, what was confusing me. As you can see each microprocessor has three channels, potential channels for RAM. And what, would it, what it was saying is, if you come here to the DIMM installation sequence, it tells you to order, to order, install them in the following sequence for microprocessor socket 1, 3, 6, 9, and then 12, 15, and 18. Well, I had RAM already in 3 and 6 and 12 and 15, so logically I thought I'd put the new RAM in 9 and 18 and 2 and 11, right? That's not the way it works. Um, that is just not the way it works. It, uh, hang on just a second, let me find the other page again. There it is right there. Um, the way it works is, is that uh, you populate these, uh, you're actually populating one, uh, channel zero and one on each processor, is how I'm doing it. 
So what I did was there was a dim already in three, so I I put an eight gig in there and a four gig in here, eight gig in here and four gig in here. I skipped channel two, and then I came here. I've got an eight and a four, and an eight and a four is how I laid out my memory, and that worked just fine. So. Now your mileage might vary and I may not still be understanding exactly how the RAM works because this is in single channel mode, which means it's running at its full speed, which is I think it's 1066 DDR3 RAM. So, but keep in mind your mileage might vary, but that's how I did it. All right, so I've got the unit back together now. I've got the drive, uh, the SSD installed and removed the the uh, SAS drive from there. I'll put that back in later once I get my other drive trays back in and I'll set up a mirror with the uh, primary drive but for now um, I don't need that uh, SAS drive in there. I want to put the SSD and now I'm going to need to go into the uh, BIOS for the, uh, ser uh, for the uh, RAID controller and set up that drive but uh, we'll get to that in a minute but I want you to I'm going to go ahead and fire the machine up and that's what she sounds like when it fires up. Now it's not going to continue to sound like that, but I think it takes two or three minutes before it starts getting the IMM booted. It boots at first, and once that's booted, then this thing will quiet down as it starts to boot. Uh, but it, I just wanted you to hear that startup sound, so we'll come back here in a minute. Okay, so as you can hear, it's quite a bit quieter. I'm going to put the microphone right up to the front of the unit here. Here it is over by the fan, here it is over by the hard drives. Not that loud. So it's not, it's not any louder. Uh, well, it's not as, the Dell is, the Dell 710 is not as loud as this thing is when it's running in normal mode. But that's okay. The Dell has more fans. Uh, this one only has three. The Dell has five or six, so, but uh, it really ramps them down when it's running. So, all right, I'm going to cut the video here. All right, so we're going to come over to the IMM adapter, and we're going to log on in order to get into the remote machine. Now I've removed that uh, secondary power supply and everything appears to be okay. So I'm going to come down here to uh, remote control. I'm going to use the Java single client mode. It's going to ask me to run some software, which I'm going to do. And then it should give us our KVM window and there it is. And it's already up at the controller screen. Now what I need to do is come up here under Tools, uh, Session Options, and on the mouse I need to give it Relative Control. Otherwise my mouse will not work properly. As you can see, you got to be careful with this. So I'm going to go ahead and start. It came up, uh, it wouldn't boot, it came up to the, it said the Mega Raid uh, controller view had changed, so we have to uh, fix that. Um, so now I'm going to go into the, I think I'm going to go in the configuration wizard. I'm going to retain the old configuration, then adds new drives to the configuration. This is the safest option. Okay, so we're going to do that. Okay, so it sees this drive. Is a JBOD drive. Okay, one or more JBOD drives detected in the system. If you wish to convert those drives to unconfigured good, please choose the drive from the table below. Uh, so yes, we're gonna we're gonna choose that one, and we're going to click next. Okay, so we're gonna do a manual configuration. We're not gonna use redundancy. Click on next. Alright, and we're going to choose the drive. And we're going to add it to, let's go to drive group 1. Let's see, we're going to add to array, I believe.
okay and it looks good so now drive zero is assigned to drive our drive group zero has the 135 gig hard drive drive group one has the ssd drive 258 gigabyte and we're going to click on next let's see here ready with free space you know what i need to go back because I forgot a step and did not claim that drive. Yep, uh, sure did. I need to accept the drive group. Ta-da! All right, and then next. Okay, we're going to add this to the Span. Done. And click on next. You can see how this mouse is just kind of all over the place. And that's going to create a new uh, virtual drive. Let's see, update size. Okay, let me see. I think I need to accept it. Yes, we're going to accept right through. Let's see. Let's click on next. All right, my mouse is not behaving again. That looks right. We're going to click on accept. Save the configuration. Yes. And it looks like we're done. They're both optimal. Let's go back home. Then we will exit. Exit the application, yes. And now it should continue, re uh, continue booting. Now I'm going to go back to my session on my mouse and do absolute again. And it should boot into Windows. There's our two virtual drives. So hopefully if I've been a good boy and done everything right, I'll be able to log into this server. I'm going to just go ahead and use this uh, remote terminal rather than doing an RDP session. <clears throat> and I want to get that SSD drive set up so I can uh, move some virtual machines over to it. First thing I want to do is go out and check my memory. And there you go, we get 48 gig of RAM now instead of 32. That's good. Now let's, uh, by the same token, let's go 
Uh, let's go here to computer management. And we're going to add our SSD drive so that we can uh, move some virtual machines around. We'll come into disk management. And it sees the drive. I'm going to do GPT. Even though it's under uh, two terabyte, I just start. I've been starting to use GPT now. So now I'm going to right-click on it, and I'm going to create a new simple volume. Next, drive letter D, and I'm going to call this VM Store One, Virtual Machine Storage Number One. Perform a quick format. Finish. Bing, bang, boom. We now have our virtual machine storage drive in there. Alright, so I need to create a couple of folders. One called Hyper-V. Actually, let's rename it this. Hyper-V Machines. Hyper-V Machines. We'll use that. And then I want to create another folder under there. And we'll call it virtual hard drives, VHD. Now then, what I want to do is I want to bring up Hyper-V Manager and tell that to make its default storage location that drive. So we'll go to Hyper-V Settings, D, Hyper-V VHD. We want to go to Browse. And we want to go to D, Hyper-V Machines, VHD. Select Folder. Same way with the hyper uh, with the virtual machine folder, come down to the D drive, Hyper-V machine, select folder, and apply. Okay. Now I already have my lab domain controllers on there, but I have them on the C drive. So what I want to do is now move those over to the D drive. So all I have to do now is right click on the machine, tell it move. Next, we're gonna move the virtual machine storage. Next. We're going to move all the virtual machines data to a single location. We could do different locations, but I'm just for the sake of argument. Okay, we're going to browse now to that D drive, Hyper-V machines. Select that folder. Next, finish. And now it's going to move the uh, files off of the C drive and onto the SSD drive. So Lab 1, uh, the 2016 domain controller, has been moved. And the hard drive is now on the D drive, the SSD drive. And I'm going to do the same thing with the uh, other domain controller. I'm going to move the virtual machine storage. All of it to a single location. And we're going to move that over to my SSD drive. Up, oh, not into that folder though. Let's pick the right folder, Hyper-V Machines, and finish. And we'll come back when that's finished. Ladies and gentlemen, we interrupt this video for a special broadcast. <laughs> this video is going to be a two, count them, two-parter. This is the end of part one. So you'll have to stay tuned and watch part two to see what happens with the rest of the uh, virtual machines and this new IBM server. I mean, frankly, why monetize one video when I could monetize two videos, right? Twice the fun, twice the money. Anyway, the second video is coming right up. So don't be afraid uh, to keep your, uh, make sure you ring, uh, click the little notification bell so you get notified when I post the uh, second video, but it won't be too far behind. But anyway, we hope you found this video entertaining and informative. Smash that like button if you liked it. Give us a thumbs up down below. Leave your comments in the comment section. We take PayPal. We take Patreon if you're so inclined to donate. Keep, keep uh, tuned in for part two of this video. And don't forget, we'll see you on the other side.